Today's episode of Tin for Tuesday is brought to you by the patrons of this channel. One of the things I've barely touched on so far on this channel is the Big Bang. An interesting topic that we've only really started to properly understand. But when Matt Powell official had a go at debunking it, my patrons couldn't help themselves. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin for Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a special thanks to all my patrons who voted for the inclusion of this video in today's Tin for Tuesday. If you'd like to get involved with Patreon, check out the link in the description. There's plenty of reward tiers available, so please do check that out. Right, back to Matt Powell official, and apparently he's debunked the Big Bang with three questions. Let's hear him out. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell. If I was to tell you that there was a gigantic explosion, one of the first things that you would ask me is, well, what caused it? If I responded back to you and said, well, nothing caused it, nothing caused this explosion, you would say that's crazy. You know, you'd say that's madness. You'd say that's absolutely insane. But if you look at the Big Bang Theory and the atheistic perspective of it, According to them, since there is no God, nothing would have had to create everything. Couple of things here. First off, the Big Bang Theory is not an atheistic theory, it is a scientific one. And secondly, there wasn't an explosion. The Big Bang is a really poor name for it, actually. And so they think that nothing caused an explosion at the beginning that created order and created our universe. As I said, we don't think that. We think there was a singularity and we don't really know what came before that. We just know there was a rapid expansion of space itself. No explosion, no bang, just expansion. Now that really shows that professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and that the Bible just comes back right time and time again about these people that claim to be very logical. Well, no, because you fail to understand the theory. If they can't even get their own creation story uh, somewhat based in logic or science or reason, I don't know why people should put any trust or any uh, faith in what they say. We don't come up with theories for fun, we use evidence. This, for example, is excellent evidence. This is the cosmic microwave background radiation and consists of microwaves that used to be gamma rays. The reason it is good evidence is because when those gamma rays were emitted in the original expansion, the wavelength of light was physically stretched by space. The lengthening of those wavelengths mean they were stretched to microwave length. When you hear static on the radio, some of that static are those very microwaves, evidence that space has expanded. And so to say that nothing exploded and created everything, that nothing caused an explosion, is absolutely pathetic. Well, I wouldn't call it pathetic, but I kind of agree with you because we don't necessarily think it was nothing before that. The second problem that I have with the Big Bang Theory and that science has with the Big Bang Theory is this idea that there was nothing and then an explosion occurred and that there was something. Sorry, wasn't that your first point? Mathematically speaking and scientifically speaking, the first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Well, it's more like energy can only be transferred, not created, but yeah, go on. So it's scientifically impossible to go from nothing to something. So the first two flaws with the Big Bang Theory is this idea that nothing caused the explosion and that the explosion created time, space, and matter. Wasn't an explosion, and it must have, otherwise you wouldn't have be here right now talking about it. And so we know that matter cannot create itself, and so an outside force would have had to bring matter into existence. Ah, uh, here we go. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so God set the world in motion. God created the heaven and the earth, and God was the force that did that. And you either have to believe that someone created something out of nothing or that nobody created something out of nothing. The problem with that theory, though, is best explained by Ricky Gervais. So he did the light, invented it, which means 
that he created the heaven and the earth in the dark. <laughs> Fucking hell. How good is that? I'd have gone, right, let's have a little bit of light on the situation. Let's see what we're doing. Right. <laughs> I need some planets. Uh and so those are the first two problems with the Big Bang Theory. And a third problem with the Big Bang Theory is this idea that it, that it created order. And that somehow this explosion out of chaos produced order in planets that are in a perfect orbit. Well, when you've got about 14 billion years, then things can kind of sort themselves out. If we live in a universe where things are tending towards disorder, how did we get order in the first place? If an explosion occurred, wasn't an explosion. And created order. How did this even come about to begin with? And so these are three big issues with the Big Bang Theory. And I think it should be rejected by the scientific community. I don't think it has any logical basis. Is that because it disagrees with the Bible by any chance? Let me assure you that the Big Bang Theory is the best theory that we have for the beginning of the universe. It's not perfect, of course, but this is science. And if someone could come along and better that theory, then excellent. And people that try to defend the Big Bang Theory will try to redefine the Big Bang as an expansion. They'll say, well, it wasn't really an explosion. It was just an expansion. Ah, he's called me out. It was an expansion though. But the Big Bang Theory states that the universe went from the size of an atom to the size of our entire universe, our known universe in a trillion trillionth of a second. So if that's not an explosion, I don't know what is. Well, that was actually a little white lie there, Matthew. In a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, the universe was no larger than 168 meters in diameter. To be as small as a, smaller than an atom, and then just go to being as big as our universe in a trillion trillionth of a second, that is an explosion. It's also not true, as I just stated. And the only reason they try to redefine it and say, well, it's an expansion is just to make it sound like it's not as kooky as it really is. Except it was an expansion. It is an expansion. It's still expanding now. And these people that want to make fun of Christianity and mock Jesus and mock the Lord God and come out against Christianity and pretend like they have purpose in their life. You know, if the atheistic worldview is true, and if the Big Bang is true, then what is the meaning of life? To look after each other, to do what makes you happy, to enrich your understanding of the world, and to be kind. That's my view anyway. They might say, well, the meaning of life is whatever I assign to it. Precisely. So I give myself meaning. Well, that's a circular argument, because you're saying that the, the reason that you're alive and that the reason that there's reason to living is because I say there's a reason to living, so therefore there's a reason to living. The thing is, who says there has to be a reason for living? Life is life. Let's just enjoy it while we can. That's absolutely ridiculous. And so these people have no credit. They have no scientific credit, no logical credit, certainly no biblical credit. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart there is no God, and foolish people come up with foolish ideas. And the Big Bang Theory is probably the most foolish idea in the history of mankind. So those are the three main issues with the Big Bang. These are unanswerable questions. Except we've just answered them. Um, in any debate or discussion that I've ever ended up in, the atheist has always ended up in a chokehold by these questions, not because I'm so logical or I'm so good at debating, but because these questions are just so powerful and they show that their worldview is absolutely pathetic and ridiculous. I'm sorry, but who are you to say that my worldview is pathetic and ridiculous? If I now berated religion and said it was pathetic and ridiculous, what would you say to that? And I've been in discussions and debates where they'll say, well, I don't have a worldview, Matt. Why are you saying I have a worldview? And I always like to ask them, well, is that your worldview that you don't have a worldview? Because that's a pretty interesting way to view the world. The YouTube atheists out there will typically mock Christianity and try and recruit young people into believing their religion. What? And I think that they spend a lot of time shadow boxing against the God that they claim not to even believe in. But one of the things that they 
constantly do, and you'll see this on every little avatar that they have out there, they always have a fantasy name for themselves. Because of course they have to live in a fantasy land. If they think that they have to assign meaning to their lives and that the reason that they're alive is because they define a reason for their living and that's the reason that they survive and live, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. And so we can expect for them to be ridiculous in other areas. Says the guy that has official after his name. And so these YouTube fantasy names that they assign themselves like Aaron Ra, no, that guy's real name is Larry Nelson, you know, which just sounds crazy. I understand why he wanted to take a step and go into fantasy land because anybody that has that name, Larry Nelson, you know, and, and espouses that ideology that he espouses um, would probably feel pretty freakish about themselves. And the guy does look pretty crazy. Is that very Christian of you, Matt, to judge people on their appearance? You look at all the other uh, YouTube atheists out there. I mean, the Godless Engineer, another man with a fantasy title for his fantasy type. And, you know, you have the Raging Atheist. You know, and it's funny because these YouTube names that they assign themselves, it's like they give themselves away. Yes, definitely give myself away. I like science. I'm a man. And my name is Dan. I'm busted. You know, raging, the raging atheist, the definition of rage is out of control emotions. You know, so maybe he should just call himself the out of control atheist, because that's exactly what his name even means, if he wants to assign that fantasy name to himself. And maybe you should just call yourself Matt Powell and drop the official. It reeks of delusions of grandeur. And so <clears throat> I wanted to do this video to explain why it's stupid to put any stock in what these people say and why the Bible is true. Jesus said that there shall not be one stone left here upon another. You know, Jesus said there were things going towards disorder. And so to say that an explosion out of chaos produced order, not only does that go against what science says, it goes against what the Bible says, and it goes against the creation story that God instituted and the truth of the word of God. And people do not need to fear these YouTube atheists and these people that pretend to be logical. And I think that's the crux of your issue. The Big Bang Theory threatens your belief in a creation story. And that is why you've gone on the offensive. You know, a lot of people will make fun of Christianity. And in 2020, there's a lot of people that want to attack Christians. And I think we should go to the defense of God's word boldly for the cause of Christ. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So it's the power of God to us Christians. It's foolishness to them. And so professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And so the three main problems with the Big Bang that I'd like to see atheists try and answer, and of course they failed every time, is, do you think that nothing caused an explosion? No. Do you think that's logical? There's the first problem. The second problem is, do you think that this explosion created matter and energy? No. Because the second law of thermodynamics, the first law of thermodynamics states that matter can't be created or destroyed. Do you believe that this explosion out of chaos produced order after it created matter and energy and after nothing caused it, just somehow produced order? No. Wow, that was easy. That's ridiculous. No serious person, no scientific person out there should ever take these people seriously. And the only reason I do videos like this is because there's a lot of young people out there that get confused. You know, they see the YouTube atheist community going wild against people like me and people like Pastor Anderson, or people like Dr. Kent Hogan. That explains a lot. Hi, Kent. And in this next film that we have coming out on creation versus evolution, all I do is go to the college students at ASU or other universities and just ask questions. I'm gonna be asking questions to some more famous atheists, and we're gonna see what the result is and so this project, I believe, is going to be a success. And not only are we going to debunk the Big Bang in this film, just like I did in this video, but we're also going to step further into the creation versus evolution controversy. Wonderful. 
Right, let's leave Matt Powell official for today. I'm certain that we'll be talking to him again soon. Thank you all very, very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for episode four of the Simon Dan Show. See you then.